we need to do is actually very quickly talk about the network setup that we're doing in this particular demonstration. I've got three machines. Right now I've got my Ubuntu machine, which is running my Snort. I have a Kali machine, which is going to be sending an ICMP packet. And then I have a Metasploitable machine that's going to be receiving that ICMP packet. So I'm going to be sending an ICMP from this machine to this machine, and we're all on the same network. Let's just do a double check here. Ubuntu is 1.75. Check over here. I've got a 1.73. Let's take a quick peek at the Metasploit machine, and we can see that it is a, a 1.2. We know now that all these machines are on the same network. Now let's do a quick test to make sure that Snort is actually working. Now, I really like running Snort in a virtual machine type of environment. In the drop down, you'll actually see I've got a link to a video that I made a while ago where I actually go ahead and install Snort on an Ubuntu machine. Now I went through and checked that video again and all of the things work perfectly. And this is actually a clean install of Ubuntu where I've actually gone ahead and reinstalled Snort and it's very straightforward. Now you're gonna want to, for this particular lab environment, double check a couple things. One of those things being that you've installed Snort and you've actually configured something in the the configuration file here. So I'm gonna to go to this the configuration file and you can see that I set a, a home network of 192.168.1.0 slash 24. And we know that that is actually the same network that this machine, the Kali and the Metasploitable are all on. Okay, so that's an important setting. I haven't changed anything else inside the configuration file here. Let's go and also take a peek at the rules that I've configured in my snort here. And it's inside the local rules. And it's a very straightforward one. So basically, when this machine sends an ICMP packet from any port to a particular IP address, which, which in this case is actually our Metasploitable machine, it's going to alert that and then have a message attached to it. So I've got ICMP, Wireshark, Snort, very basic. It could be whatever I want, okay? So let's just double check that this rule is in fact working. Okay, so I'm actually gonna start my console here and we're gonna generate traffic to our target over here. We're gonna send a ping and we should see on the left side of the screen some alerts. Bingo, bango. We have traffic that has been caught inside our snort. So these are these are the alerts. Our, my intrusion detection was watching for that. Great. How does Wireshark work with Snort. Let's go ahead and open up our Wireshark solution here. And before I do any captures, I would actually like to navigate over to preferences. So edit, preferences, and we can go down to our protocols. And this is actually where Snort is going to live. Fly on down to where the S's are, over here that snort is one of the protocols that we can search on. So I could actually type into my display filter snort and it's gonna show the traffic that is being caught by my IDS. Now, a caveat here is that these actually both have to be running at the exact same time in order for Wireshark to show you the traffic that is being caught by your IDS solution. Now I've run this in Windows. I much prefer to do it in the Linux environment just because the file structure is just so simple. Let's take a peek at the options that we've got here. So we've got show rule state stats in the protocol tree, show alerts in the expert info. So that would be in the bottom left when you see we've got that yellow yellow circle when you when you're running Wireshark. That's that's pretty handy. Try to show alerts in reassembles frame and then tell Snort to ignore checksum error. So these are all options that you can play with. I I I like having them all turned on and it, it just makes things a little bit easier. Now I've tested all three of the options here, not looking for Snort alerts, 
not really helpful from user packet comments that would be analyzing uh, in the comments of the packet i mean it's right there but then from a running snort that's the that's where the magic actually happens so let's set it to running snort and we're good with that so you'd hit okay another caveat is that you do need to have your machine whichever one is your virtual machine set to promiscuous mode i've got another video where I demonstrate and explain what promiscuous mode is and how to set it up. So go ahead and watch that video. It will explain how to configure your virtual box. You also need to have your Wireshark set into promiscuous mode. My, by default, it actually is just, that's just the way it is. But it is good to check. If you're going to check that, we would do it like this. Head on over to edit and go to preferences. And we are going to look at the capture, and we would be capture packets in promiscuous mode. So by default, that's turned on, but you do need to make sure that that is actually the case. So it's clicked, it's checked, I'm happy, we're going to hit OK. And I'm going to now capture traffic on this host-only network that I have created. Capturing traffic, we will shrink this. And then we're going to go ahead and actually start our IDS capture again. So now it's running. That's great. Let's go to our Kali and send some ICMP traffic. Okay, and we can see it happening on both places. We've got the snort catching it, and we've got our Wireshark also capturing that traffic because it's in promiscuous mode. I'm going to stop the pings, and I'm also going to stop snort here, and stop our capture. Now let's go in and analyze this, this traffic. Expand my Wireshark here, and because it is a protocol within our, our Wireshark environment, we can actually filter based on Snort. So you can see it goes green, hit enter, and now here's all those packets that were sent from my Kali to my Metasploitable, but in addition, we've got something new, and you can see it right away, that we have an additional data that's attached to that particular that packet. So Wireshark and Snort are working together to add the information. Perfect. Like we can expand it. We can look deeper at what's going in. We can see the rule that was in place. Uh, we can see the particular message that was uh, requested in that point. And this is great. So right away, we can see sort of the benefit of having Snort and Wireshark working in tandem. Now, the, the catch here is that they do have to be working in tandem. And that's the part that would make people sort of go, oh, I don't know if I'd actually do that. Because one of, the, one of the nice things about IDS is that it is lightweight and it is monitoring and watching. I mean, we'd have this traffic here that is alerted and we could just look at this and know that that thing, that particular event that we were looking for has happened. Whereas doing this, having our Wireshark, it's nice to see that we've got our Snort in there, but it is a little bit redundant. So there you go. Snort and Wireshark, they work beautifully together. They do have to run at the same time. Your particular virtual machine does need to be set to promiscuous mode. But everything, if, if everything is set up properly, you can have a quite a nice PCAP here that will have some additional information. If you're enjoying these videos, please go ahead and Check out these other videos that I've got on the screen here. I honestly think you're going to enjoy them.